Hello, everyone. I'm Jerry Savelle. I'm glad that you're watching our broadcast today, and I trust that as you watch, your faith is going to be greatly inspired, and I believe, praise God, that as you watch, you're going to get some insight from the Word of God on how you get in a position to experience God's best in your life. Today, we're going to be talking about a set time. You might be asking, what do you mean by that, a set time? A set time in the Bible is a predetermined time by God Himself for certain things to take place in the lives of His people. A set time. For instance, Galatians chapter 4 and verse 5 says, But when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth His Son. Notice, in the fullness of time, Jesus could not come before this set time had been established. And there are certain things that God has promised in His Word that are going to take place for His people in the day and time in which we live. It's a set time. So I'm going to take you into this service where I was preaching this message here at Heritage of Faith Christian Center, our church right here in Crowley, Texas. And I want you to pay very close attention because I know it is going to inspire your faith. So watch now. I'll be back in a few moments with some closing remarks. I was reading the Word yesterday just uh, in preparation for what the Lord would have me share this morning. And I came across a phrase in Matthew chapter 26, something Jesus said. And I just want to read that phrase to you in verse 18. Right in the middle of the verse it says, My time is at hand. My time is at hand. The Passion Translation says, My appointed time is near. My appointed time is near. Not too long ago, I was out on the road uh, preaching, I believe it was in Birmingham, right after uh, the minister's conference in January that Brother Copeland had. I believe it was there, and I was preaching about to everything there is a season from Ecclesiastes chapter 3. It says, to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. The message translation says, a right time for everything. There is a right time for everything. Uh, some translations say, a set time or a fixed time, which is predetermined by God. In other words, it's not something I set, it's something God sets. It's predetermined by him. And then another translation says, a fitting time or a proper time. And once again, it's all determined by God. And the Adam Clark commentary says, God by his providence governs the world and has determined particular things and operations to take place at particular times. Now notice once again, Jesus said, my time is at hand. My appointed time is near. When I read that, it just seemed to jump off the pages into my spirit. Appointed time. Appointed times are determined by God. The only way that you and I could know when an appointed time is here is it have to be revealed to us by the Holy Spirit. Now, or it could come through the mouth of a prophet. Amen. And of course, the prophet, for the most part, if he's a true prophet, he's being inspired by the Holy Spirit. And so, uh, I'm thinking of an incident in the Bible where it says, the prophet stood up and said, this time tomorrow. So that meant that they knew tomorrow was the appointed time. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Nobody had to wonder when that appointed time would be. Tomorrow. Now you and I don't always know that something's going to happen tomorrow unless it was revealed by the Holy Spirit or once again could come through the mouth of a prophet. Okay, because the prophet is one of God's acts as God's mouthpiece, okay? And so he said, this time tomorrow. Now there were people, or one person in particular, who didn't believe it. He, he just couldn't see any way possible 
that this could happen by tomorrow. And the prophet went on to say, oh, it'll happen, but you won't experience it. You got to mix your faith with it. Amen. Amen. And it did happen tomorrow, just like the prophet said. It did happen, and you know the story. I won't take the time to go any deeper into that. But once again, that phrase, my time is at hand. My appointed time is near. Now here Jesus is referring to his death. His appointed time was near. But we must also remember that not only was it appointed time for Jesus, but it was an appointed time for mankind. Right along with it. When Jesus was willing to go to the cross and give up his life, that was our appointed time as well. Galatians chapter four and verse four and five says, but when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son to redeem them. So when Jesus said, my time has come, my time is near, it's at hand. He's also referring to our time. Amen. And he said, Paul says, in the fullness of time. In other words, there was a perfect time for this to happen. Everything had to be fulfilled first. Uh, The Bible in the Old Testament prophesies things that had to happen before Jesus even came into the earth. And then once he came into the earth, the Old Testament prophesied about things that must happen while he was in the earth. And when it was fulfilled, then Jesus said, okay, my time is at hand. I fulfilled everything that was spoken about me leading up to this time. And now it's time for me to go to the cross. It's time for me to pay the price for man's transgression. So once again, it was an appointed time for him, but it was also an appointed time for us. Can you say amen? Amen. First John chapter four and verse nine says, God sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. John also tells us one chapter earlier in first John chapter three, verse eight, for this purpose, the son of God was manifest that he might destroy the works of the devil. And then the book of Hebrews says that through death, he might deliver them who all their lifetime lived in the bondage of fear. And that's referring to us. So once again, Jesus appointed time was also an appointed time for us. That's when we were set free from Satan's control. Now, going back to Paul's writings, he tells us in Galatians chapter five and verse one, stand fast therefore in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free, hath made us free, hath made us free. I'm not gonna get free when I get to heaven. I'm free now, praise God. In fact, I've been free for a long time. I didn't find out about it until 1969. Some of you may have just found out about it today. (laughs) But we've been made free when Jesus was willing to give his life and to pay the price for Adam's transgression. So Paul says, stand fast in that liberty wherewith Christ has made us free and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Now, throughout the Bible, if you study it carefully, there are various stories of people experiencing appointed times, appointed times. And when they came, so did victory come. Along with that came great uh, supernatural blessings when appointed times took place. Let's go back and look at a couple of them just for reference purpose. Go back to Genesis chapter 17. Genesis chapter 17. And you know the story of God making covenant with Abraham. And then look at verse 21. But my covenant will I establish with Isaac, Abraham's seed, which Sarah shall bear unto thee at this set time in the next year. Now, all those years, Sarah was barren. 
it was impossible for her to conceive. Her womb was dead, the Bible says. But when God shows up, <laughs> everything is possible. Even old women can get pregnant. <laughs> I hope nobody's believing for that. Amen. <laughs> But notice here, God gave them a set time. Let's read it again. Verse 21. But my covenant will I establish with Isaac, which Sarah shall bear. Now notice, God's already talking about Isaac, and she's not even pregnant yet. He calls things that be not as though they are. But my covenant will I establish with Isaac, which Sarah shall bear unto thee at this set time in the next year. So Abraham and Sarah already know that a set time is coming next year. Yeah. Amen? That's right. That's right. So, you know, when people say, well, Brother Jerry, how do you know this is the year for supernatural increase beyond anything we've ever experienced before? Because God told me. That shouldn't seem unusual or strange to you. <laughs> Amen. The Bible says from the mouth of Jesus himself, when the spirit of God comes, he will not only lead and guide you into all truth, but he will show you things to come. I purpose to know things to come. I don't just live in the now, I live in the coming, <laughs> in what's coming, hallelujah. And you've heard me say it many times, particularly during the month of October is when I set time aside to specifically listen to God as to what's going to happen in the coming new year. Amen. And he's never let me down. I may not get it the first day that I set my heart to receive, but I don't give up, hallelujah. Sometimes uh, it comes in the first part of the month, sometimes in the middle of the month, sometimes in the latter part of the month. This past year, it came in the month of September while I was flying to Australia with Brother Copeland. I just minding my own business, not bothering anybody. <laughs> Didn't have 2020 on my brain. And the Lord said in 2020, I will cause, I will open a new door and I'll cause you to experience supernatural increase beyond anything you've ever experienced before. And I knew that was the word of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Somebody said, well, how do you know it was God? Well, the devil is not interested in bringing supernatural increase to you. So it couldn't have been the devil. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Now notice once again, I'm going I'm to just keep bearing down on this point. At this set time in the next year. So Abraham and Sarah already know that some major turnaround and a breakthrough is about to take place in their lives next year. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wouldn't that inspire your faith if you knew next year this is going to happen? Or wouldn't it inspire your faith if God told you in advance tomorrow this is going to happen? I don't know why people think it's so strange that God would tell us in advance some things that are about to happen. I expect him to tell me. Hallelujah. And then my responsibility is to tell you. Hallelujah. And tell the body of Christ everywhere he sends me. And that is exactly what I've been doing since September 2019. I preached it all over uh, Africa. I, I, in fact, I'm going back to Europe next month, uh, 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 England, Ireland, wherever else we're going, and I'll be preaching it there, praise God. Hallelujah. Preached in every church I've been to here in the U.S. since September, and people are already experiencing it. Hallelujah. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm probably next. Now, let's go to Genesis chapter 21. Genesis chapter 21, and look at verse 1 and 2. And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said. And the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken. 
Well, isn't that amazing? God keeps his word. And Sarah, for Sarah conceived and bare Abraham a son in his old age at the set time of which God had spoken to him. So that would mean that exactly one year later from the time that he told Sarah and Abraham that they were going to have a son, his name would be called Isaac at the set time. Well, when that set time came, no devil from hell could keep Isaac from coming. Hallelujah. And no devil from hell can keep supernatural increase from coming to you if you'll dare receive it. Say, I receive it, praise God. Amen. So along with great victories come supernatural blessings. When God talks about a set time, turnarounds come, breakthroughs come. When you take the time to read all the times where it's mentioned a set time in the Bible, then you'll find people going from slavery to freedom. They'll go from poverty to prosperity and they'll go from not enough to more than enough. Hallelujah. And the beautiful thing is he's still the God of the turnaround. He's still the God of the breakthrough. Hallelujah. He's stretching out his hand right now to bring deliverance to his people and and supernatural increase to them that dared to believe for it. Hallelujah. Now let's go to Psalm 102. Psalm 102. And look at verse 13. Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her Yea, the set time is come. Yes. Hallelujah. Wouldn't you, wouldn't you be excited if you had lived back in that day and it was told to you the set time has come? Yes. Hallelujah. I, I, I remember studying uh, from Leviticus about the year of Jubilee. And every 50th year, God would have someone to sound the trumpet, blow the trumpet of Jubilee every 50th year. They, he established a, a, a year of Jubilee. And if you read it, you'll find out that it was a year when everyone was set free. It was a year that everything was restored back to them that they had lost. It was a year of great and supernatural blessing. And they knew that every 50th year, if you were still alive, at that time, then in the seventh month, I believe it said, and the 10th day, someone would go out and take that shofar and blow it. And that would indicate Jubilee has begun. Now, don't you know if you had been living in that day and you were in bondage and things had been taken away from you, your children were in captivity, you'd lost everything you had, don't you just believe that if you'd been living and you were one of those people, when they saw that old boy grab that shofar, I don't know about you, but I probably would have stopped him on the way and said, how's your throat today? <laughs> are, you, are you feeling good? Because buddy, when you blow that horn, my freedom begins. Hallelujah. Amen. Don't you know people were excited when they saw him? I mean, they, they'd been waiting a long time. Some of them, you know, they remembered the last Jubilee they experienced 50 years prior. And now it's time for Jubilee again. See, that was the, that was the compassion of God. They didn't deserve it. They brought the bondage they were in on themselves. But because God's compassionate, and God is love, he wanted them to experience at least one year of freedom, even if they didn't deserve it. And so he established this ordinance called the year of Jubilee. Amen. 
And when that boy blew that horn, the jubilee was sounded and everybody was set free and everything was restored to them. Whatever the enemy had taken from them, it was brought back to them. Come on. Prosperity, days of victory, days of prosperity. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, I'm acting as a horn blower. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm blowing the horn of freedom. Hallelujah. I'm blowing the horn of supernatural increase. Hallelujah. Amen. Somebody ought to check to my throat this morning. Somebody ought to have said, are you okay, Brother Jerry? You're feeling good? Because, Brother, we want you to blow the horn when you come in that service. Hallelujah. I was preaching on the year of Jubilee one time in, in uh, Bob Nichols' church years ago. And when I got to the part about that old boy got up to blow the horn of freedom, somebody in the audience stood up and went, do 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 And for years later, every time Bob Nichols saw me, he went, do 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 I said, shut up, Bob. <laughs> Amen. Notice, thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her. Yea, the set time has come. This set time to favor Zion had come. Amen. A set time denotes a time for God's divine intervention to take place. That's what you and I are experiencing this year. God's divine intervention. Amen. Some may not deserve it. In fact, he specifically said to me, he would do this for the faithful. Amen. But if you haven't been faithful, you can still get in. Just determine you're going to be faithful for the rest of your life. Amen. Make the decision right now. If you haven't been faithful, then make the decision. I'm going to get faithful and I'm going to start right now. Hallelujah. Amen. So a set time denotes a time for God's divine intervention to take place. It's when he's determined to bring to pass something that he has promised for his people or to do for his people. One commentary states, it's a time, and I love this, when God bestirs himself. And the word bestir implies to rouse, to stir up, and to become active. Look at your neighbor and say, my God has bestirred himself. My God is ready to go into action. And thank him in advance for it. Amen. Jerry and I have some exciting news for you. The Jerry Savelle Bible School is now ready. You can enroll. Each course is online and we're excited about this school without walls. You know, the great thing about it is you don't have to come to Fort Worth, Texas and enroll and be in the classroom. You can take each course at your own pace, at your own time. As you enroll and begin to take these courses, you're going to receive in-depth teaching from God's Word. It's going to help build a foundation for living by faith and learning how to receive everything that God has for you. I'd like for you to prayerfully consider enrolling in this Bible school. I believe it will be very beneficial Fisher for you, and I look forward to having the opportunity to impart into your life. Thank you, and God bless you. God keeps His Word and His promises. When God sets an appointed time, no crisis, no trouble, and no hardship can stop His plan for your life. 
Today's special offer includes Jerry Savelle's three-part audio teaching, Seizing God-Given Opportunities, and his inspiring book, Show Me Your Glory. You will strengthen your faith as you discover how to triumph over opposition, how God's presence brings miracles, and how to embrace your full potential in Christ. The set time for your victory is on the way. God is stretching out His hand to bring breakthrough and supernatural increase to His people. Don't delay any longer. Call or go online now to jerrysavelle.org and request your copy of the Set Time special package, including Seizing God-Given Opportunities on CD and the Show Me Your Glory book. This special offer will help prepare and position you to walk in God's promises. God has already determined your victory. It's just a matter of time. Did you enjoy the message today? I really hope you did. And if you did, then be sure to tune in next week for the conclusion of this message because I believe the way we end up this message is going to be such a great blessing to you and it's going to be a great inspiration to your faith. Now, let me read something before we close. Psalm 102 and verse 13. Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion for the set time to favor her. Yea, the set time is come. Notice a set time. You say, well, how do you know that pertains to us, Brother Jerry? Because verse 18 says, this shall be written for the generation to come and the people which shall be uh, created shall praise the Lord. Notice he said it was not only for the people at this particular time, in David's time, but it's also for the generation to come. I believe he was talking about you and me. God says there is a set time for his favor to be outpoured upon his people like at no other time. And that's what you and I should begin to expect and believe for and praise God in advance for it. So once again, I want you to tune in next week as we continue this message once again, I'm going to say to you, it will inspire your faith. Before we leave the air, don't forget that we have a special resource package for you today. It's entitled, three CDs entitled, Seizing God-Given Opportunities. God is going to create more and more opportunities for you to experience His favor, His blessings, and prosperity and success. Know how to get in position to receive. And then right along with it, my book entitled, Show Me Your Glory. The glory of God is the manifested presence, the manifested power, and the manifested goodness of God. And God wants you to experience it more today than ever before. So go to your screen uh, and see how you can order this material or go to our website, jerrysavelle.org. Order right away. I'll see you again next week. Amen. Amen. 